Hey guys, what's going on? Brian back with another video. So today we're going to be jumping in. I'm going to be starting something up that I haven't done in a really, really long time for you guys. We're going to be diving back in. I'm going to be doing some, uh, like a guided walkthrough for you new players who are coming to state of K2. Uh, I've had a lot of people recently messaging me telling me, you know, I'm new to the game for tips and tricks. So I'm going to kind of dive back in we're going to do like a new player walkthrough slash guide. I'm just going to be giving you guys tips and tricks, showing you guys all types of stuff as we play through um, what I think is the ideal setup for you guys to go through. So, uh, yeah, let's get it started. All right. So first things first, we're just going to start a new community. Now, if you have never played a community before, you won't even get these options. Um, so if you are playing a game and, uh, you are in the tutorial, but you want to select your own characters. Maybe you've seen another, uh, content creator, something like make characters. And you're like, how the hell do I do that? It, it's just giving me these standard characters. Once you play through the tutorial, all you have to do is leave, go back to the main menu, and when you go to start another new game, it will it'll tell you this. Uh, you can replay the tutorial or skip. So what you're going to do is either you're just going to skip the tutorial, and that's going to allow you to go ahead and actually uh, select your survivor. So we're going to go with Providence Ridge. I feel like it's a pretty good balanced map for new players. Now, difficulty. This is um, what I'm going to tell you newer players to do. Um, this is not something I would tell a person who's brand new to this genre and never played these games before. Just play on the regular standard zone. But if you are, like, striving to become better at the game, like, you want to end up playing in lethal zone, nightmare zone, um, that's kind of going to be another thing I'm going to focus on here and try to get you guys built up to just be better players. So uh, how I would do it, guys, this is hands down how I would do it. You're going to go custom. All right, so we'll leave it on standard. I, I advise you guys, uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'd leave it on standard. Uh, like I said, we're going new player. Leave it on standard. This will allow you to only have to deal with uh, no plague freaks, none of that. Um, now, for the community difficulty, bump this up to dread. Bump it up to dread. Uh, there's no problem doing it. I, you're not really going to notice any difference between standard and dread on your community difficulty. But for your map difficulty, now this uh, might sound crazy for a new player. But I promise you will appreciate it later on down the line. Um, these earlier difficulties, even up to Nightmare Zone, they just give you a, too much loot. So when you do jump into Lethal Zone for the first time, you're going to be like, oh my god, there's nothing to loot here. So what you can do, just jump right into Lethal. So go Standard Action Difficulty, Community Difficulty will be Dread, and your Map Difficulty will be Lethal. Now this, I promise, all this is going to do is going to make loot scarce. And it's going to make you have more play cards on your map. But you will appreciate it later on down the road. So let's get into uh, selecting characters. All right. So I have all the boons unlocked. Right? I'm not going to play with any boons. Um, just to give you guys a better representation of what you're actually going to be playing. And here is where you'll be able to uh, do your characters. So if you already have characters, you know, you can come through here and you can pick those people. But if not, um, you just hit this X here. And uh, you're, you're just going to fill out with random survivors. And... Uh, so generally, when you're rolling for survivors, people look at these fifth skills here and they say, you know, what do I need? With the new outpost update, these fifth skills aren't super important because if you get somebody that just doesn't have a fifth skill, you can just train them later on down the road in exactly what you need at that time. So what I tell everybody, when you're rolling survivors, I roll for traits because traits cannot be changed once you're in game. Um, you want to aim for things like Blood Plague Survivor, which is the best trait in the game. It means that your person is 100% immune to Blood Plague. They can never catch it. Uh, so it's a really, really good trait. Uh, things like Unbreakable, which means your people will never take permanent damage. Um, it, there's a ton of really good traits. Uh, things even like Immortal. Immortal is pretty good. It just gives you a whole bunch of extra health. But the top two traits I would advise you guys to, look, to aim for is Blood Plague Survivor and... Um, unbreakable those are super super good so uh, i'm gonna roll some traits here and uh there's also a couple fifth skills that we'll talk about later on that are kind of worth it you know in the higher levels of play but uh for right now look for some people with good traits if you do have an ideal build that you're going for for your community roll those fifth skills if you want to um and i'll show you guys what i end up with when i'm done all right guys so this is what i ended up coming up with i got uh, a blank fifth skill here so we can just make this whatever we need uh, as we're working, but we have an incredible immune system, which um, gives us plus 100% plague resistance. Really, really good trait. We got somebody here with high lung capacity, really high stamina. This is our medic. 
I wanted to start with an early game medic that way I can just try to get that path that early game pathologist as soon as possible. Here we only got to make up two stars. I was able to get a good trait with it, so she was a keeper. And I I, I couldn't roll me a unbreakable, but hard as nails is uh, the same as unbreakable, but it's just not as good. Uh, unbreakable is 100% injury uh, resistance. Hard as nails is only 40%, and it gives you an extra 30 health too. So. Um, hard as nails is pretty good. There's another one. Uh, what the hell it's called? I think it's uh, there's hard as nails, and I think it's hard to kill. And I think the only difference between hard as nails and hard to kill is I think hard to kill gives you like 10, 10 more health than hard as nails does. So uh, we got another survivor, blank fifth skill. Somebody we can just work on and get them whatever we want later on down the road. So uh, let's jump right into this. All right, here we are, Providence Ridge. Now, as you guys can see, the condition of this car. Super duper jacked up. If this was normal standard zone, this car would not look like this. So there's a, a whole lot of stuff that um, you making it on the lethal map deep difficulty is just going to prepare you for so many things later on down the road. But you don't have to deal with the same difficulties that lethal zone, like, you know, zombie wise, plague feral, stuff like that, that a new player just really isn't ready to deal with. You don't have to deal with because uh, we have the action slider all the way on standard. But mix and match in those sliders, it's really going to help you out. So here we got meds and materials in the back. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've, I've seen too many players not get their vehicles up and running. So here, um, there's a gas station right there. Literally. Right there. Just walk over there and get some gas. Now, the thing you're going to notice when you're on a lethal map is there's going to be a ton of preluded buildings and that's what that's kind of what I'm aiming for here is I want you guys to learn how to play with that uh a lot of the buildings being preluded because that's a, a big problem that people have when they go into higher difficulties they're just not used to the lower amount of rewards but this is me getting you guys trained for that early on But as you can see, the spawns, they're still chill. It's still standard zone spawns. That's actually a decent amount of plague zombies for standard zone. But that's a byproduct of the plague territory. Not All right. So since we have our survivors with us, I'm going to head over here. We're going to try to get some gas. I like that attitude. Yeah, so getting your car up and running early game, super important. Um, it is the best. It's going to be your best tool, honestly. Yeah, two gas cans. Look at that. And we might be able to even get a fuel ruck. Wow, three gas cans. Okay. And there's still another thing we can loot in there, but right now, not super important. Um I really hope we find a new home soon. We got a zombie incoming. Now the red zombies, obviously, if you guys are super brand new, these are the ones that give you the infection. Then and they're located in these red fog areas. You're gonna find pretty much nothing but those. In this area so you got to be careful because those are the ones that will infect you with the blood plague really hope we find a new home soon. so um if you guys don't know when you have a survivor you're allowed to transfer items so right now like if i found another rucksack i wouldn't be able to hold it so what you do is since you have these followers with you, you come up to them down. you can you access their inventory and you literally just give them whatever you don't want to carry so i'm going to keep one gas can on me um but i'm going to give her the rest of the stuff that way, I'm nice and light. And uh, we're going to hit uh, over here for food. I want to try to get to my base with as many resources as I can. And there it is. And that's what I uh, I would advise you guys. While you're out here, um, loot before you head back to your base and claim it. You know what I mean?
And I mean, right now, like I said, you're you have two survivors following you. Generally, you can't have two survivors; you can only have one follower. But uh, early like this, when you first start, having two survivors is pretty useful. All right, so now we're gonna give this other one to her. And hmm. we'll go grab one more uh, little thing of food over here at the Waffle Depot. Now, food is pretty uh, a pretty important resource. Obviously, your people have to eat, and uh, we're gonna have we're gonna be losing a little bit of food because of our survivors. So, to boost up your food really early on, it just gives you a cushion because food is really the only food and meds. Are really the only two resources that will uh that give you like time restraints Seems to be locked. all right so i've actually had people ask me how do i do that so when you walk up to a door and it's locked like this people are like how do you cancel it what i do is i just hit the dodge button and they let go of it uh so on pc i have my dodge uh even on a c and i believe on uh controller it's the red button b so he's pushed that and they let go of the door. But uh we want to smash this open, so I hope nothing heard that. Give me the food. So I'm just trying to showcase here, you know, guys, the uh even though we have that lethal zone map difficulty, it's not going to screw you up in any way, shape, or form. Like I said, it's going to just make it so you're getting used to apocalypse levels of loot. Because right now, if you put it on standard, like say you're a newer player, you put it on standard zone loot or map, you're going to have loot out of your, just pouring out of your ears. You're, you like, you know what I mean? There's no sense of, uh, no more zeds around here. There's no sense of like material like you know just resource deprivation or anything like that it's it doesn't exist so i feel like playing like this is just a it feels good it feels good now, i know you got a lot of you guys are probably like where's your mini map i i have it turned off but uh for this series i will turn it back on just so you guys could see some of the things i'm talking about later on all right so we we're able to get three rucksacks oh we got a Fuel, two fuel or two food rucksacks, a fuel rucksack. The car has a materials and I believe a meds rucksack in it. So we're we're, we're doing pretty good. And as you guys see, I really haven't had to deal with much combat. Until they just go fight for no reason. So let's get this car fueled up and let's head up to the base. Now, if you do have boons, activate them. Um, I definitely take advantage of them. I, I obviously, I said I didn't want to use any because I was trying to go for more of that person who doesn't really have boons. So that way that I can rep, like completely replicate how their you game will look. All right, so I'm going to drop this food in here. Just, and anything super heavy you have on, like, this weighs 20 pounds, guys. Super heavy. This food weighs a lot. Um, so there's no point in me carrying that stuff on me. There's going to be a couple zombies in here. Uh, just get that heavy stuff off me. That way I can fight better. It is officially oh, ours. Idea. Now, the good thing about this base, um, it is not as powerful as the other map starter bases, but the good thing is, is it does give you an infirmary right off the bat. You do not have to go and uh, build one. You already have an infirmary right off the bat. It, it is pretty nice. Now, the second facility that I, I usually always build 
is a workshop. Right now, we're going to hold off and see how many materials we have before we start building anything. Let's get all uh, unpacked. I'm gonna leave a gas can in the back. Until we build a workshop. A broken weapon is a useless weapon. Now, what they're saying is true. Having a workshop is a super valuable facility, but early game like this, it's not like you're gonna break your weapon like within the, like you know the next ten minutes. But if you're not repairing your weapons, it really doesn't matter either. Uh, these starter weapons will be replaced pretty pretty early on anyways. But I do advise you to get in a, uh, a workshop at some point. They are super useful. And we'll go more into that uh, once we start actually building up facilities. So look at our resources. We're already looking pretty nice. Yep. So the only things... We're really hurting on right now is meds. All right, so I have a, a survivor with an eight slot backpack. Now, um, this is just my pre personal preference. I, I, I'm gonna go out doing some looting, and uh, I want the person with the bigger backpack. So, uh, you can check your survivors, see how big their backpacks are. People spawn with different size backpacks, different melee weapons. Like she has a baseball bat. I actually kind of want that instead of this meat cleaver. So just, you know, unpack your stuff. Take inventory of what you have for resources and loot. Um, Stay alive, all right. And, you know, just you can go around and just kind of take what you want off of your survivors and kind of just, like, I want this baseball bat. I wanted this big backpack. And uh, she's hard as nails, as you guys can see. Pretty high fighting, so we're doing pretty good. Now, let's see how many materials we got. So we're up to eight materials. I want to see how much it costs to build. Okay, so building a workshop will cost half of our materials. Um, and I, I say do it. It'll allow you to fix your weapons. Uh, I'm, I'm, let me see if I can. Is there anything else that we can build early on that? No, I guess for right now, just get your workshop going. And that's what I would advise. So. This starter area, uh, because you're going to be playing on that lethal difficulty, your car is going to be really, really beat up. Um, now, you need a level 2 workshop in order to craft uh, repair kits for your car. Now, since we're on the lethal difficulty, it's going to be a little bit before... Or the lethal map difficulty is going to be a little bit before you can get a level 2 workshop. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys where you can go and get a guaranteed, well, pretty damn guaranteed uh, repair kit. There's no auto shops in this area, which kind of stinks. But there is a spot that I pretty much always get a repair kit at. All right, so I actually, before we head out, I'm just going to drop these 762 rounds off me. Just so I go out with a 100% completely fresh inventory and now this is kind of on the way so first things first first order of business i always like to uh, this is what i'm going to advise you guys to do i always like to get all of my resources out of the red before i do any missions before i start you know because you're gonna have uh, this mission right here that pops up this is uh the first mission that you'll always have to deal with these people are going to want plague samples um now like i said before i do any of that i always like to take care of my resources first Missions are not mandatory. You do not have to do them. Now, if you want to maintain good relationships with enclaves and stuff like that, yes, you want to make sure that you're keeping up on your missions somewhat. But at the end of the day, if you can't get to it, the worst thing that's going to happen, people are going to get a little mad at you. Depending on how long you ignore them, yes, they can go hostile. But um, the only people I would super pay attention to are enclaves that give you good benefits and you don't want to lose those benefits for any reason. Those guys, yes, make sure you keep up on their relationships, but everybody else, no. Uh, missions do not matter. Resources come first. Your community comes first. So right now, the only thing I'm red on is ammo. And like I said, we're going to go down and get our hands on the repair kit. That is going to be down here at this northeast cell tower. There's a couple tool, uh, like, uh, tool 
holders, like tool cabinets here, and uh, toolboxes, like big, big toolboxes or little toolboxes that you can sometimes, most of the time get one out of. But on the way down there, there is actually a military checkpoint in the road here that we're going to hit. So we're going to kind of go down there. I, I advise you guys to try to get a ranged weapon early on in the game. And this is just to kind of deal with ferals and stuff like that. But since you don't have a way to suppress it, you're, this is kind of just going to be your emergency weapon. God, I am so sick of Depending on what you get. Um, I don't know what we're going to get our hands on. This is military grade loot down here. So uh, you can kind of get almost anything. So you're gonna start. You're gonna see me do this a lot, and I'm gonna explain to you guys. When you pull into somewhere, like I could just park here and leave my car here. I always advise you guys to pull up against something, right up against it. So the front of your car is up against it. That way, if I have to get out of here in a hurry, even though I don't have doors, zombies could still pull me out. But the front of your car is the weakest part of the car. Like if if zombies jump on your car and, and they start hitting the front of it, it will blow up super fast. So what this does is it makes it so zombies can't jump on the hood of your car. Say, uh, I'm, you know, there's a horde of 30 zombies around me. All I got to do is get in my car. They can't jump on. I could spin around and get the hell out of here. Now, if my car was out in the middle of the open and I stopped and jumped out of it, they would instantly jump on the hood. They'd beat the car to death and it would explode. So I advise you to park your car up against something uh, when you come into an area. So we're going to have some spawns. And they are military zombies. So these ones... If you guys don't know about the armored zombies, they are really, really tanky. If you fight them with straight melee like this, um, you're going to be hitting them for a while. Now, these baseball bats have good knockdown, so I could have just executed him right there. So for armored zombies, that is mainly what you're going to want to do is go for the executions. It's the fastest and easiest way to deal with them. So we'll knock him down. Go in for the executions. Instant kill. He seems like he's the only one. Nothing more to kill here. Now, I'm surprised this whole area is outside of plague territory, which is nice. Um, not that I really need an outpost in this area, but. Now, this is what the new outpost changes. This is what the new plague territories. That's kind of, why, kind of why I wanted to revamp this new player's guide. Mine was uh, for the old nightmare zone and before a lot of these changes. So flashbang grenades, not super duper great, but they're good for ferals. Um, you just got to kind of practice with them. You can easily stun yourself. So they're not a throwaway item. Make sure you keep them. I'll, maybe later on I'll try to show you guys how you can use them against ferals. Step two, find cool. useful stuff. So here is, as you guys know, we have the primary and secondary. This is a primary rifle. It's a 7.62. We actually got a little bit of 7.62 earlier also. So let's just equip that for now. It's a nice little teeny... I believe it's really lightweight, right? Four and a half pounds, yeah. 7.62 uh, has different full auto and single fire. And no scope, but it's still a pretty decent gun. So if you guys do jump in and try the lethal map difficulty, like I was telling you guys, I think you should do. Um, let me know what you guys think of that idea. And if it's helping you guys out, you know, giving you more of that apocalyptic feel. Because like I said, without doing that, the map is just going to, it's saturated with so much loot that uh, you're not going to know what to do with half of the stuff. But playing like this, like I said before, it uh, it's a really good feeling. And there should be what, one more up top, maybe. Yep. All right. So there's our bag of ammo. Now, gun on the gun front, we got a decent weapon. Um, you know that we can use in case of emergency. Well, we found everything we can possibly find. We got our bag of ammo, and uh, we can't complain. We cannot complain. So this uh, breaching hammer is a better weapon than the bat. But for now, I'm going to just save it. There's no reason for us to uh, bang it up. Just use up the bat while we have it. But the breaching hammer is a uh, pretty good upgrade for the bat. 
At least this bat. There is a metal bat that you can use. That's also really, really good. So here is the cell tower place I was telling you about. Um, and this is generally where you can get your hands on that toolkit. Now, please don't make me a liar game. So as you guys notice, I closed the door behind me. It just If zombies do come up, it just gives you that. There it is. Gives you a couple extra seconds, you know, to uh, get ready before they start running in at you. So I'm not going to waste any time. It's literally going to repair my car right off the bat. It's super beat up. Now, on the lethal map difficulty, the one thing you are going to notice outright is there is way less car spawns. They spawn with almost no fuel, and they're pretty banged up. Now, like I said, it's going to... Playing on this is going to give you... It's going to make you take more care of your cars because they're harder to come by, which if you were playing on normal standard zone, like I said, cars are kind of everywhere. Uh, it's going to give you more of appreciation for your vehicle. You know, not that I uh, am the poster boy for taking care of my vehicles. I'm actually the poster boy for uh, blowing cars up, if any of you guys know me well. And uh, another re good thing that we just got out of here is all these scraps of circuitry. You need these to upgrade your workshop to level two. You need five of them. So we were able to just get pretty much all the scraps that we're going to need for our level two um, upgrade right from this building. Car's in good shape. Fuel's in good shape. It's starting to get a little dark. Now, one more thing that we could do. I'm going to go dump off this stuff. Is uh, One thing you could do is uh, go look for a crossbow. Which... I uh, I think I'm going to actually go ahead and do. But I want to see if there's a food outpost that I can claim that's outside of plague territory. And I don't believe there is. At least not up, up here. Okay. So I was going to say, if you're going to claim an outpost early on, food outpost is the way to go. Now, this is controlled by this plague heart. So before I can even get this, I'm definitely going to have to uh, deal with that play cart. Let's go back up the base. Now, if you're not ready to deal with a play cart, which, you know, at, right at this point, I advise most of you guys not go to try to take care of play carts. Um, and if you are a pl player that can go deal with the play carts right now, uh, you probably don't need to watch this this guide. And just like that, we got tons of resources. Tons and tons of stuff. So look at this. Look at this locker, guys. Already, we are we're kicking butt. Uh, we got guns. We got some melee weapons. Uh, we're looking really, really good. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to top off my snacks, swap my bandages. So bandages are a good uh, healing item to leave in your base because it actually takes time for to use it and your person's locked into an animation. So bandages aren't a good on use item for like when you're in combat. I would save that for things like the weak painkillers or the regular painkillers. Because those, uh, you just activate it and it immediately starts working. There's no animation, there's no nothing. I mean there is an animation like your person will do this. But you're not locked into that healing animation that can be interrupted. Um, snacks, if you guys don't know, these are like the lowest grade of stamina. Uh, restoration but what it does is you pop a snack you just literally hit the button and your bar will instantly refill um, but then you'll start obviously uh, breaking it back down but it's just an instant refill they're pretty good but then you got things like energy drinks and stims these are like you drink it and it just keep it boosts your recovery so literally you're gonna have quote-unquote like infinite stamina for a short period of time now depending on if you're swinging a heavy weapon you can still make yourself tired through energy drinks stems though those things are pretty pretty uh amazing so we're wasting a little bit of uh daylight here but what i'm gonna do is we're gonna go down we're gonna activate this quest these guys are gonna want plague samples but in order to help me farm plague samples for them uh i advise you guys to try to get your hands on a crossbow crossbows will increase they when you kill a plague zombie which are the red ones 
with a crossbow, it increases the drop rate for the uh, the plague samples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give somebody this gun here at base because I don't really want to make noise out there anyways. So they could use this for base defense more than I will. You know what I mean? So I advise you guys, if you want that gun on you for a security blanket, keep that gun on you. Don't You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. If you want that security blanket, definitely keep that gun on you. But I know I'm about to go loot another place that may have another gun. So right up here, there's another ranger shed. And then over here, um, as you cut across, there's campsites here in these woods. And you got some cabins over here and over here. Now, if you hit all of these areas up here, the couple campsites through the woods here, these cabins and these cabins... You have, a, I'd say, probably a 70 to 80% chance of finding a crossbow. It, it's really, really high. Oh, I didn't grab any. Did I grab healing items? I didn't. See, I almost left without healing items. So before you leave your base, just give your inventory a peek. Make sure uh, you got what you want. Now, that like right there, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Uh, always, you know, check your inventory before you leave. Make sure you don't go out underprepared. Because you will regret it. Now, like I said, I don't have that gun on me. Uh, so if I run into a feral, it, it, it could suck. But uh, it's a chance that I'm willing to take. Me, personally. I feel like the chances of me seeing a feral this early on will be pretty low. Ranger shed, like I said, is up this way. All right, it's getting kind of dark out. Now, don't be scared to drive your cars. Like I said, yes, they make noise. Um, it's, but er, heavy weapon, awesome. So that heavy weapon is a great find because this is going to be one of our main ways of taking care of play cards, especially early on. Heavy weapons are amazing uh, when you don't have a lot of resources. It's locked. Figures. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of zombies around. It can't everywhere be this quiet. Before we trap ourselves in there, anytime you bang down a door, just step back out. See what you have coming in, and then deal with it. Now, you guys probably seen what I just did there, where I, I, I did like a jump back. I'm going to give you guys little combat tips as we play. That is what happens when you dodge without hitting any direction. So all you got to do is when the zombie swing, is about to swing at you, just hit the, just tap the dodge button. And you'll just jump backwards like this. Now, this is a good way to just, you know, kind of dodge zombies. Because zombies, you, when you first start fighting them, um, they uh, uh, call them a couple friends. They can swing faster than you can. So, you want to make sure that you, you... I usually dodge, like, initially. And then you hit them with that counter attack. Look at the knockdown on these baseball bats. That's why I say it's a great starter weapon. Now, you guys probably see me do the push. Um, we'll go into that more later on. But for right now, I'm just, we'll, we'll keep the combat pretty basic. All right, let's see what kind of goodies we can get out of here. Maybe we don't even have to go check those cabins. Maybe we'll get lucky and get a crossbow out of here. Oh, we got bolts. We got some crossbow bolts. I don't know, guys. I'm feeling lucky. Oh, some 5.56. Five, okay. Luck is slowly, you know, draining out of my body. Okay, so we got a box mine, shoddy shells. We're getting some nice loose bullets. Loose bullets are always good. It's less ammo you have to spend later on down the road. Yeah. Look at that, guys. So, I'll, just like I told you, um, 
Like I said, this is on lethal map difficulty you too, guys. So, so this is, you know, <laughs> this is just finding good stuff. So we're going to equip this crossbow right away. Great find. We found a 1022. That's another great find. Um, let's go dump some of the stuff in the car. So we were able to get a crossbow, which, like I said, if, uh, if you can get your hands on the crossbow, I showed you the areas to loot. Come up here, check this shed. Drive through the woods here. You'll see little tents and campsites around here. If you can't find one there, hit these buildings over here. If you still can't find one there, come down and hit these. And um, you should get a crossbow throughout that uh, little searching point. If you don't, you got some really, really bad luck. And if you don't and you have that bad luck, please let me know down in the comments if that happened to you. All right, so I'm going to hit this last thing. Oh, handgun ammo press. Wow, talk about streamer luck. So those ammo presses will be used later on in game. Uh, um, I'm going to swap this for that really quick just so I can equip this break on it. It's going to give me an extra inventory slot. That's the only reason why I was doing it. So these ammo presses, you can put them in your workshop down here. Uh, that Once I actually put the ammo press in base, it'll be here. And once it installs, it'll give you an option. And with the handgun ammo press, you're allowed to craft 9mm, 22, and 45 caliber bullets by using your base's ammo resource. So as you guys can see, you can see like those little campsites I was telling you about. You'll see them scattered throughout the woods here. Like there's one up there. It's uh, it'll obviously be better for you if you come doing this during the daytime. Oh, you can just see better. So, like I said, uh, I know that their group's gonna need plague samples. They're gonna need two of them. And now that we have that crossbow, I'm going to come to base. I just want to empty out my stuff. We don't need any of that. We'll keep the bolts on us. I don't. Oops. I, be any I don't think I have any extras, right? Nope. No extra bolts. But having 20 bolts should be enough for me to uh, accomplish my task right now. So... Plague samples. They are used for crafting blood plague cures. If you get your hands on a biochem station, which we'll talk about, it's a, it's a pretty much another uh, craftable station that allows you to craft really, really like top end like bio weapons and stuff like that. That's way later on down the road, though. Um, but it, with these bread cloud here, this is the cloud. In this cloud, you're gonna find a bunch of those red zombies. And now that we have that crossbow, we're going to head down there and we're just going to farm up the two samples for the mission. Having a plague heart move in must really fuck up property values. So we're going to come down here. We're just going to park and uh, we're just going to walk around on foot. Looking for some zombies. Now, you don't even need to talk to them because, like I said, I already know what they want. We're just going to go out and look for it. We're just going to be looking for the zombies with the red eyes. They're really easy to see at night. Now, the only problem is they're hard to shoot at night from behind like that. Uh, they're pretty hard to hit headshots on from the back. So you kind of want to come at them straight on. That way you can see. All right. So I'm always going to come check my zombies, see if I can get my bolt back. And if I got the plague sample. So that zombie detected me. Now, I'm going to throw him on the ground because, like I said, I want to kill him with the uh, crossbow. 
So I'll teach you guys how to do that. Dodge behind him. You're going to hit the grab button. Whatever that is. I believe it's right trigger on um, controller. And for me, I can re keep on to a button on my mouse. But whatever it is, go in your settings. Go to controls. Go to remap controls and just look at whatever your grapple button is. Um, and whatever that is, that's the button you want to press. But don't just press it, guys, because if you press it, you're just going to grab them and let go. You got to press it and hold it. Don't let it go. And as you guys see, the longer you hold the zombie, the only thing that goes down is your stamina. So you got to make sure you're behind the zombie. If you try to grab him from the front, he's going to jack you up. So you get behind him, grab him. And as you can see, my stamina is going down. Um, you can hold them as long as you run out until you run out of stamina. So you push the throw button on controller. It's a on PC. It's spacebar, and you'll throw them. Now that gives me a chance to reload my crossbow. I want to kill this guy with a crossbow. So I just pushed him. All right, he's doing his little scream. Now he's going to come at me. Kill them. I'm going to throw this guy on the ground. Reload my crossbow. Like I said, this is just going to increase my chances of getting those uh, samples. And I missed. You know, pro shooter. So we're going to throw him on the ground again. Now, you can even just reload and run up and just shoot him in the head while he's on the ground like that. And uh, then you don't have to worry about bad aim. Let's, uh, maybe that crossbow bolt is over here somewhere. Probably not. All right, we got some zombies over here. So we've gotten one so far. Uh, we got one plague sample so far. And uh, later on down the road, we're going to that grab and push that I just showed you. We're going to really, really build on that. And it's going to become a, a, a pretty core centerpiece of your fight and tactics. If you f decide to, you know, fight like I do. All right, so, you know, the, the plague sample drops are kind of stingy. I wonder if that... I don't know if plague sample drops are... I mean, before I give you guys bad information, let's check. So, are plague sample drops part of map? Mm -hmm. I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you guys. Um, but that would be cool if the plague sample drop rate is tied to the map difficulty because, um, in green zone and standard it's pretty pretty easy to farm plague samples. So this is gonna teach you about you know what it takes to farm. So we're gonna get him on the ground. Yeah, they have to be tied to map. So that that's that's cool. That's really, really cool. It's either tied to map or community. We got a little bit of extra inventory, so I'm just gonna loot this car. Why not? Again. Parts. So those little screws, if you don't know what they are, they are not junk. They are a very, very important crafting resource. And almost everything that you will craft in the game requires them, for the most part. That was a good-ass shot. Alright, so, yeah. As you guys can see, farming plague samples is a blast. But you gotta be careful because because the plague samples are now like it seems like they're tied to the map difficulty. They're gonna be a little harder to get, and with it being harder to get, so I don't. 
I don't want to take a bad shot, so we're just going to sneak up on this guy. There we go. Because they are going to be harder to get, you really want to be careful uh, with the red zombies, guys. That's the, um, it's, You're going to actually feel a little bit of danger now because if you get blood plague, it's hard to cure if you don't have samples. And as you guys can see, getting these samples from zombies isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. There's our second one. So, mission complete. Now, the only thing is, like, yes, we have two for our mission. But if if any of our people are sick, uh, we are gonna we don't have enough to cure them. You need five. So, I'm about to give these two away, which is going to bring us back down to zero. And if you guys could imagine, I would have to come back out here and do more farming. But I'm just going to avoid the plague zombies uh, to the best of my ability. So, I don't get anybody sick. Fully sick. Because there is ways, which we, I'll show you guys later on once we do get a little bit of sickness. Uh, actually, I'll just show you guys right now. So if one of those zombies hit me, uh, right above my minimap, there's going to be a bar that shows up. And it's going to start filling up with white. Uh, and it's going to fill up, fill up, fill up. Once that bar is fully maxed out, you're going to fully gain the blood plague. Um, before that, it's not life-threatening. It's not anything. You're just getting sicker and sicker and sicker. But once that bar actually completely fills up... You will have blood plague, and that's where you need the cure. But what you can do is say I brought her out. Say I got about a quarter of that bar filled up out here. I was hit a little bit by some plague zombies. Uh, what you can do is when you get back to base, you come to your infirmary, and you can check people in. Right now I have a level one infirmary, so I have one slot where I can check somebody in. And what that does is that speeds up the recovery. That white bar, while they're checked in, We'll just start going down, going down, going down until it completely disappears. That is free. You don't have to pay for that. It doesn't cost anything. You can just you just got to check them in. Now, if you have a couple of plague samples, what you can do is here is you can come over here and spend plague samples to instantly bring that bar down. Um, but I don't advise you to do that early game or at all, really, uh, because, like I said, it is a waste of plague samples that you can just use to make uh, cures. Let's come in here and get these guys their samples. What's up? With these plague samples? I can make something that'll cure blood plague if one of us gets infected. We're okay. Happy to share the recipe if you need it. So, as you guys can see, uh, see, they put a rucksack on my back. A lot of you guys are not even going to notice that. Um, but yeah, when you finish this first mission, they're going to give you a rucksack of fuel. So, make sure that you just go drop that in your car. Now, this first mission gives you 500 influence. So that is uh, a good st chunk of starter influence. Remember, we need to focus on taking out some plague hearts. You got it. It's a good chunk of starter influence to get you um, your first outpost. Now, obviously, I want a food outpost. I advise you guys to get a food outpost. Um, I can't do that right now, though, because of this plague heart. So we're going to trade with this enclave, see what they got. We have a whistling box mine. Eh, it's decent. Now they have a rucksack. We could buy this rucksack, but because it is still early in the game and we still have medical areas around us that we haven't looted, like right here, there's an urgent care. These bathrooms and the campgrounds, those have meds in them. There's another bathroom in the campgrounds right here. So that's three rucksacks of meds that I know of. And oh, actually, and then there's another one right here, um, right there, this building. So that's four rucksacks of meds that I know of. So I'm not going to waste my money right now buying this from them. But let's see what else they have. Good to see you again. Uh, they got some parts. So nothing great. Um, I'm going to hey. check their skills, just so we have an idea. So this guy, powerhouse, great skill, um, is a herbalist. This is a really decent survivor. Uh, Arnold, and he has a heavy weapon and a crossbow. Hey, amigo. Brooks, a mechanic, might come in use, but we can just create oh, yeah. our own mechanic. And you are lost, so trash. But um, Arnold here, he's definitely a possible recruit. All right, so right now, once you get like to the point where you're like, all right, what do I do? First thing I always do. Check my resources. Is there anything that I need right now? Nothing that I really need. Everything is low. So obviously I can still go out and do some looting, which I think 
we're going to head up and loot some meds. And while we're doing that, in the process, we're going to be continue hunting more of these red zombies. So, parking like this, they can still jump on the front. Zed's around, but we can't secure the place with a plague heart close by. So when you enter a building, um, the zombies will spawn in. Now, uh, with the new fix that they add, a lot of times the zombies will spawn in before you even enter the building. But um, what you do is when you first come in, just listen. Generally, you'll hear them. If they're in the building, you'll hear them uh, growling and shit. Right now I don't hear anything, but I'm still going to clear the rooms. Looks like nobody else is home. All right, so no zombies. Hmm. Boom. This might be useful. So there's two different loot styles, guys. Um, I I am a certain I loot a certain way. I used to be a blanket looter, which means uh, I would just loot like sectors. Like I would just loot. I, my goal is to loot the whole map, and that's fine. Um, if that's how you loot, if you're like, all right, so I'm gonna clear out this whole sector. I'm gonna loot every single thing in this area. Um, that is definitely a a way to loot. But if you're looting like that early game, what it's gonna do is you're you're not gonna be able to get everything you need. Like you know, say I needed food, but there's no food in this area, but I'm like, I'm going to loot this whole area. How is that going to help me? So what I do now for my loot style is I, I target loot. So I say I need meds. I'll, I'll come and I'll loot the meds. You know what I mean? And, th and that's it. And then if I need materials, I'll go loot materials. If I need food, I'll go loot food. So I target what I want to loot. And then if I'm just, you know, in the area and I want to clean some up, stuff up, get some miscellaneous items then i'll just kind of go around and loot what's left but um i advise you guys to have a goal when you go out to loot and target what you want and get it so coffee that will help out if we want to keep somebody awake but generally if i'm like all right i need meds either i'll just go grab the rucksack and leave or i'll I'll just loot everything in the building uh, where I, I went. So, if, you know, for instance, I needed the meds. I got the meds, but now I'm just going to loot this whole entire building out. And we're getting some That's pretty decent stuff. stuff. So these shelves, I, I instantly want to put... Now, you got to pay attention to what you're grabbing because stuff is heavy. And you might pick it up and then you'll start fighting a bunch of zombies. And like, why am I running out of stamina so fast? The shelves weigh 20 pounds. So anything that's super duper heavy. Okay. So there was about a 90% chance if I shot at that zombie, I was going to miss. Okay. I think he's just in the back. All right. Where's this last lootable? That's the thing about plague territory. You can't see through the walls. Um, oh, here it is. Which is cool. So it makes the scouting skill kind of useful again. Okay. Time to put this place behind us. All right. So we were able to get our hands on some decent stuff. We were able to get our hands on some meds. We got that first mission done. Our resources are looking decent. I think this is a... We got our car up and running. We got fuel. This is what I would call a pretty decent start. You know, we're not, you know, balling out of control, but... We've established a pretty decent foothold. Now all we got to do is get this play cart out of our way. And, uh... But don't rush to get that done. That is a hell of a task. Do not rush to get it done. And that's something that we'll focus on next episode. And I'll, I'll kind of train you guys on how to get prepared for... For, uh, your first play card. So let's drop this stuff in the base. We got some stuff that we can go sell. 
Um, do that enclave to get ourselves some more influence. But yeah, so jump in, guys. Uh, kind of use the guidelines that I laid here for you. Uh, we have an infestation, so that's another thing that we're going to take care of. Uh, as soon as these pop up, take care of them. Don't let them sit because they spread. They get bigger. They're really annoying. Um, as soon as you get an infestation out of your map, just go take care of it. They're they're pretty pretty easy to take care of if you catch them early. Um, but yeah, get in your map. Uh, follow the guidelines that I laid out for you here. And like I said, you're going to feel a little bit of uh, resource pressure if you're used to the low, uh, the high, like, loot turnouts from the lower difficulties. But I promise if you go and play like this, it's very re rewarding. And uh, it, it feels more like a survival game without all the, you know, lethal zone BS that you guys probably aren't ready for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how this is uh, working out for you in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.